Going carnivore in Thailand, baby. It's day number 33. It's uh, 9.30 in the morning. I'm already out in the pool getting some walking exercise and some toe lifts and some leg lifts and a little exercise. My arm still hurts. And the doctor yesterday at the hospital told me, try to keep it as immobile as possible and give it a chance to heal. They gave me some medicine that's anti-inflammatory. And they said that I have calorific tendonitis, uh, plus the fact that my ball of my rotator is deformed. He said, it looks like there's no fractures and the deformity looks like it could have been there for a very long time. So it's not a perfectly round ball that goes into a, a socket, but yeah, I should have took a picture, but there were signs everywhere that said, don't take pictures. So, oh well, can't show you. But a little tidbit from Thailand here. First off, let's go to the scale. It sucks. It's a liar. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I feel like I'm losing weight. I feel like I'm losing inches. The scale stuck again. Now, like I said in one of my earlier videos, I spent years as an industrial weighing technician. I could fix everything from a gram scale, a pharmaceutical company, to a truck scale along the side of the highway. So I know scales. And I know a liar when I see one. <laughs> Not really. Scale isn't lying, but oh well. It is what it is. I might have to make some adjustments. I might have to, like, take cheese out of the diet for a little bit. See if that makes any difference or whatever, have you. Now, uh, last night, I had liver hamburgers. Actually, it was like sliced up liver, grilled, and then a piece of cheese put on top and uh, some some salt. Delicious. And I feel like I got more iron today, so who knows? <laughs> you know, who knows? But I want to tell you a little tidbit from Thailand here. Now, this grass we got grows very short. But now, this grass interceded so with the grass is some Thank you tall so growing grasses. So you yeah. have this very short grass that doesn't grow very high, like a, a green on a golf course. And then in two weeks, you get stuff that's this tall. And it's six inches tall and stuff and looks horrible. Now, the contract we got with this landlord that owns this property is that they come by and do landscaping once a month. And when I read it, they said that was enough. Bullshit. Not enough. So Noy went out and she found somebody who works for the community around here and got them to give us a price to cut the grass and get back low again. And I look out and the guy's out here with a weed eater, weed eating around the trees and weed eating around the pool and getting grass into the pool, by the way. But, but, okay. I thought, okay, he's just trimming. But then I, I still hear the weed eater going. I look and he's out in the middle of the yard and he's going back and forth with this weed eater and he's trimming the grass down to about that tall. Now, I've been showing you some film of the grass that's only about that tall. Well, I, I had a hissy fit. To be honest, I just said, don't you have a lawnmower? Aren't you supposed to like use a mower to do this? Well, that's the thing about the Thai culture. These people ain't afraid to work. Now, he cut this entire yard 
and I'd say it's a good quarter acre of grass, something like that. You know, not small. He cut the entire stuff down with a weed eater. It took him like an hour and 15 or 20 minutes. And he weed eated the middle of the yard like he had a lawnmower. And I thought he's gonna tear this thing up. It's gonna look horrible. There, He's gonna dig into the ground and, and cut stuff uh, down too low. And you're gonna see dirt. You're gonna see divots where he took it out with the weed ear. Not. This guy did the best lawn cutting job I've, I've had here. I mean, slow. And then, and then he had a partner. He, it was a guy and a woman, okay? And I thought, okay, well, he's weeding grass. But, you know, the other people use a lawnmower and suck the grass up into the bag, then dump the bag onto a tarp and take the tarp away and stuff. His partner was out in the middle of the yard with a broom and a garbage bag, a green garbage bag, and she is sweeping the grass because now it's cut this low. <clears throat> and she's got this big, wide, wide, wide broom and she's cutting the grass. She's sweeping it like this into piles and putting it into the bag. So the thing about the ties are they aren't afraid to work hard. Now, would I pay for that? Well, maybe too much. I paid somewhere in the neighborhood of $30. Uh, I thought it was too much at first. But the quality of the job they did and the work they put in and everything, uh, I'm not so sure it was too much. It seemed like a lot. But I enjoy looking out at good landscaping. I enjoy being out here and getting my little exercise in. And it looked like crap when you got low grass and then all these, what look like weed, but they're tall grasses. You know, it would look like the middle of summer in Ohio if you didn't cut the yard for two weeks and the grass gets about this tall everywhere. That's what it looked like, but just, sporadically you know every six inches there's a couple of them you know but they're spread apart and they're ugly maybe i can find maybe i can find a short video and put in here where i uh sent a copy of that when it did look ugly but that's just a little tidbit from thailand uh now today i'm going to try something different with the ribeyes Saw a video where a guy was saying that 137 degrees is supposed to be this super perfect temperature for the ribeyes, which is like 58.3 Celsius in a sous vide. And that that would not overcook the ribeyes too much, and but it would do a little bit better job of rendering the fat, which got me to thinking. I'm not plating this at a restaurant. So what if I took the ribeyes, trimmed all the big fat off, and if there's fat in the middle of the ribeye, trim that out. Maybe I end up with, with a ribeye cut into three pieces. Uh, and then pull off the, the little skin-like stuff that goes between sections of the beef. It, it's hard to chew. It's sort of stringy. And you can, you can cut it and pull it off the beef. Uh, what if you did that and you put it in a separate vacuum seal bag and you had a second sous vide and you turn that up instead of at 58, you turn that up to like 75 or 80 so that you're rendering that fat and really softening the fat up and making it easy to chew and easy to uh, process and swallow. And then you put it with your steak and you cut a little piece of fat and you cut a little piece of steak, put them together on the fork, eat them that way. 
it probably tastes great because that's what usually happens if you get a steak that's well done. The fat tastes great and the steak's too dry and tough because it's well done. But if you want a medium rare steak and have the fat taste great like a well done steak, what if we get two sous vides or do it two different times? Maybe you prepare this in the morning and then you take the fat and you put it in the sous vide at 70 degrees for four hours. Then you reset the sous vide to 58.3 degrees and then add the steak in there at 58.3 degrees and then do that for three hours or four hours. So the steak's perfect. Then all you have to do is sear the, sear the steak and you got a different deal. So that's just an idea. I have no idea if it's gonna work. What do you think, guys? Give me comments. I wanna thank you. Thank you all. I'm getting close to 300 subscribers. So if you find any value or entertainment out of this, I hope I'm a little entertaining. Uh, a little tidbit from Thailand here. If you find that you're, you're enjoying that, then uh, click the like button for sure and leave a comment. Share it with your friends if you know anybody this might benefit. But like I said, carnivore isn't for everyone. I'm still looking for people who might be interested in, uh, might be interested in doing a podcast. Let me interview you. Listen to your story. Listen to your successes and failures. Uh, I'll try to be a good interviewer. Nobody's on. Nobody's going to be uh, cross-examined here. We're just having a conversation amongst friends because I think everybody will benefit from everybody else's trials and tribulations. This isn't this carnivore lifestyle is not for everybody. You know, I've got plenty of friends who eat everything under the sun and they're thin and trim and they say they're healthy and their blood tests look good and they're in their 60s or they're in their 40s or 50s. And uh, hey, if it works, you know, I mean, you can you can buy a Humvee from the U.S. military and you can put uh, tequila in there and it'll run. You can put jet fuel in there it'll run you can put diesel fuel in there it'll run you can put gasoline in there it'll run okay because it's designed to run you try to do that with your regular ordinary chevrolet and it's gonna fall flat on its face so some people their bodies and their genetics from thousands of years on their bloodlines have just crossed into, you know, I can eat any goddamn thing. I'm going to be healthy. I ain't one of them. But maybe there's some out there who see this channel who who uh, have almost a carnivore lifestyle. Maybe they got a carnivore lifestyle and they've been doing it for a while and they said, hey, I added this back into my diet. It didn't hurt me a bit. Uh, my blood stuff's still good. All these markers are good. My weight didn't go up. Well, let me interview you. Let's hear this. So, think about it. That's all, folks.